Hey Connect families, I'm Miss Shelby and I'm so glad that you guys could come join us on our very first online children's ministry service. This is week four of our series Revealed and we basically took all of our large group and some of our small group and pushed it together that way you guys could do it at home with us. So stay tuned because we got some fun stuff for you guys today. At this moment in time, we're gonna go ahead and play a few worship videos for you guys so you guys could sing, dance, or listen whatever you feel led to do at this time. So go ahead and get started. Staring into your eyes makes my heart come alive. Suddenly brought to life when I'm Reaching beyond the skies, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love realized here with you. Come on now. Now the stuff is for real, you will never let go, never let go. Oh, and it's more than just words, love beyond my control, out of control.
was, am I living it? Do I live in it? So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste and see. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand, I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith there in the life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. Yeah. People have hidden talents and I want you guys to check out a few of these. Here we go. Look out of the window with all my heart. But I'll find love of the same sort and fall apart.
Wow, that was so amazing. I bet you guys have some hidden talents for yourselves. Let's take a few minutes to go ahead and show off your hidden talents to everyone in the room. had such amazing talents and I'm so excited to see them in person one day. Right now we're going to go ahead and jump into our Bible story for this week. So if you brought your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30. In children's we read the NIRV version, so that's what I'll be reading to you today. Starting in verse 14, it says, Again, here's what the kingdom of heaven will be like. A man was going on a journey. He sent for his slaves and put them in charge of his money. He gave five bags of gold to one. He gave two bags to another, and he gave one bag to the third. The man gave each slave the amount of money he knew the slaves could take care of. Then he went on his journey. The slaves who received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work. He earned five bags more. The one with two bags of gold earned two more. But the man who received one bag went and dug a hole in the ground. He hid his master's money in it. After a long time, the master of those slaves returned. He wanted to collect all the money they had earned. The man who received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you trusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have earned five more. His master replied, you have done well, good and faithful slave. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two of the bags also came. Master, he said, you trusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have earned two more. His master replied, You have done well, good and faithful slave. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man. You harvest where you have not planted. You gather crops where you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid. I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You evil, lazy slave. So you knew that I harvest where I have not planted. You knew that I gather crops where I have not scattered seeds. Well then, you should have put my money in the bank. When I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Then his master commanded the other slaves, Take the bag of gold from him. Give it to the one who has ten bags. Everyone who has will be given more. They will have more than enough. And what about anyone who doesn't have? Even what they have will be taken away from them. Throw that worthless slave outside. There in the darkness, people will weep and grind their teeth. Let's review our story real quick. In our story, there was a master and there were three servants. The first servant was given five bags of gold and he came back with five more bags of gold. The second servant was given two bags of gold and came back with two more bags of gold. Our last servant was given a bag of gold, but instead of taking it and making it worthwhile, he went and dug a hole and kept it in there and brought it back to the master and only had the same amount of money that was given to him. When that servant brought the money back to his master, the master was not happy. He was very furious and said he should have just took his money and stuck it in a bank because it would have made an investment. An investment means when you put money into it, it gains more money while it's sitting in the bank and you get more money back. You may be wondering how this applies to us today. God doesn't give us bags of cash to try and make more cash with, but he does give you your unique abilities, talents, and characteristics that he wants you to use to be able to further his kingdom. 
God wants you to use your abilities, your talents, and characteristics to do great things in His kingdom, bringing us to our big idea for today. Our big idea for today is that God made me to do great things. I want you to go around your family or anyone you're sitting with right now, give them a high five or a fist bump and tell them these words. God made me to do great things. I'm Bobby and I grew up on, on my family's farm. I moved to the big city, let adventure take me far. It's Hobbies with Bobby, Bobby, yeah! This is Hobbies with Bobby. Hi everyone, welcome back to my parents' farm. I'm in the basement where I do a bunch of my hobbies. Last week was such an adventure. Remember when the goat got lost and we found it? Oh geez. This week, I have a whole different kind of challenge to take on. Farmer Mason, he's asked me to run the farm stand each morning at the market. A farm stand is where farmers can sell their food to people. This morning was so busy. I'm glad I have the afternoon to rest before I go back tomorrow. I've been able to manage it okay so far. All morning, I have to keep the basket stocked full of fruit I need to keep the chicken egg cartons full for customers, and I have to run the cash register, adding up the cost of everyone's baskets. I've never been responsible for business money before. I almost came up with an excuse not to do it. I was a little nervous, but Farmer Mason, he trusts me to do this while he's away, working in the field, so I'm giving it a try. Oh, there's a story in the Bible about an owner who left some of his workers in charge of his business while he went away too. Wanna hear it? It's Bible time, time for the Bible, yeah! It's Bible time with Bobby. There was once a landowner and the owner was going on a trip like my parents did. He decided to leave a bunch of money to his workers to invest. They all got different amounts to spend. When the landowner got home, two of the workers had made more money but one was so afraid, he didn't even try. The owner was very, very proud of the first two and even gave them better jobs, but was very angry with the guy who was too afraid to take the risk. This story, it's a little confusing for me. Does this mean God wants us to take risk? How does this story apply to us? Maybe Miss Sophie can help us understand it. There has to be more there has here. To be more. to be more here. Hi Bobby. I love that you read the Bible stories and ask good questions. The more I study the Bible, the more I discover how much there is to keep learning. This story has a couple of key parts. Number one, I noticed that the landowner trusts the people who work for him. This means that God trusts us to carry out God's business. Yes, this is a great responsibility, but how wonderful to be trusted by God especially when God is in the business of loving people. Number two, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 23, when the landowner gets home, he says, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. God says that if you are faithful in the small things, then you will be trusted with even bigger things. And number three, God wants us to make an effort. This story says that it would be better to try and fail than to not try at all. This means that whatever kinds of abilities, interests, gifts, and unique characteristics you have, you can put them to use. I hope that helps, Bobby. Thanks for asking. Wow, that helps a lot. To be honest, a couple times I have been jealous when other people are good at things that I can't do. Some of you know my brother. Well... He's good at sports, and I'm not, but God has given him those talents. He loves to play, and instead of only wanting to win at all costs, he tries to be a good sport, being kind, patient, and loving to the coaches, teammates, the other team, and even the referees. They are people that God loves too. My mom always says to him, the people playing the game with you and how you treat people is more important than if you win or lose. It seems like such a small thing, but when people notice how you play differently, you are doing a big thing by showing them God's love. Who knows? 
You might even get a chance to tell them about why you are the way you are because of God's love. Pretty cool. God made me do great things. That means God made you do great things too. I wonder what skills and talents I have. And what are some of yours? Oh, that's my phone. Hang on. Hello? Yes, hello, Farmer Mason. Let me put you on speaker. Bobby, I just got a call from one of the farm stand customers. Oh, no. Uh, is everything okay? Oh, yes. Excellent, actually. She called to tell me how wonderful you were doing. You helped her find everything she needed. And you were so friendly doing it. She called to say you were blessed by God with special patience and kindness. Your smile made her day. Wow, that is great. It seems God has blessed you with having patience and kindness. Thank you for taking such good care of my farm stand. So, as a bonus, how about when you finish with the farm stand, you come over to my farm and ride our horses? Horses? Yes! Awesome. Okay, keeping exactly what God made you to be. I'm proud of you. Bye. Bye. Wow. That is amazing. I was just being myself and doing the work that was assigned to me, and my talents made a difference. I guess it is okay that I don't have the same sports abilities like my brother. God made us all different for a different purpose. And because I was faithful to what I was told to do, I also get to ride horses. Wow, what a week. Okay, I hope your week goes as good as mine. I'll see you guys again soon, and I'll tell you how the horses went next time I see you. All right, bye, friends. This is Hobbies with Bobby. Man, I love Hobbies with Bobby's and her great stories and advice she gives to us each and every week. We're going to go ahead and jump into a time of discussion that you could do with your friends and family right now. I'm going to have the questions up on the screen and you could pause the video and read the questions and discuss them as a whole group. Let's get started. I hope you all had amazing discussions together. Right now, we're going to go ahead and do some reflection time. I'm going to ask you all to close your eyes. Now, I want you to think of something that you are amazing at or something amazing you want to do in the future. Now, I want you to think about how God wants you to use that special skill to help His kingdom. Now open your eyes. Not only does God want us to do great things, He wants us to do great specific things to help people come to God and learn about Him. It doesn't have to be something so heroic or brave, maybe even just being that person's friend at school who most people tend to be mean to. God wants you to show His love to others through your abilities and skills. I want you to go ahead and take some time praying and thanking God for the amazing abilities and talents He has given you. Go ahead and do that now. we're going to go ahead and jump right back into our Bible. Look up Ephesians chapter 2, 
Chapters are those big numbers in the Bible. Verse 10, which are those tiny numbers you see next to the words. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Jesus Christ. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. That verse is basically our big idea for today. God created us to do great things. In the beginning of the verse, it said God made you how he wanted you to be. You are God's creation. Has there ever been a time where you felt like you did not like something about yourself? If you said yes, that's okay. God made us exactly how he wanted us to be. And sometimes we feel like we aren't good enough. But God will always love you. We're going to jump into our memory verse now. Our memory verse this month is Jeremiah 33, 3. With this activity, you are going to pick a tune. Maybe Mary had a little lamb, it's a small world, whatever you can think of. Then you're going to use the verse Jeremiah 33, 3 to memorize it through that tune of that song. Go ahead and get started. Thank you, Connect Families, for joining us on our very first online children's ministry service. I hope this message has reached you all healthy and well. Make sure to wash your hands. See you guys next week.